Hello and welcome to the 10th edition of St. Louis Blues Radio for the week of November 21st through November 28th. I am your host, Jeff Ponder, and... I am the only one that will be speaking with you at the moment. Uh, because of the Thanksgiving holiday, we've had problems uh, getting into our studio, uh, and uh, basically the three of us have been able to meet up. So it seems that all I'm be able to bring you this week is uh, an interview with Joe Depto, uh, who covers the Pittsburgh Penguins of the fourth period and the Penns Nation radio show to preview the upcoming Blues and Penguins game on Wednesday. Uh, and then also I will be talking with Kurt Price, uh, your normal Let's Go Blues representative besides myself. Uh, and we will uh, talk about the Chris Stewart suspension. And I will also go on to tell you about the upcoming games and any roster changes of note that uh, would be important for you to know heading into this week of hockey. Uh, first of all, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving for those of you in the States. Uh, and a hello to anyone in Canada, in Europe, or Asia, or wherever you may be listening to this. Uh, and once again, I do apologize that... We couldn't bring you a, a full show this week. Uh, funny story, actually. Kurt and I uh, ended up uh, heading out to SIUE, uh, and the doors were locked. Uh, I drive in from Missouri, so it was a kind of a long drive. Kurt had to leave his wife and children, so... Uh, Kind of a rough night, but uh, we're going to bring you as high quality of a show as we possibly can, and we will come at you hard next week. Uh, before we get to anything, I do want to mention uh, the suspension that happened to Chris Stewart this week. Uh, you know, I'll recap the games and any other injury news in a moment, but uh, it seems the Blues player Chris Stewart has received a suspension from NHL disciplinarian Brendan Shanahan. Stewart received a three-game suspension Wednesday after his illegal hit on Red Wings defenseman Nicholas Cronwall. Uh, as you may have seen, uh, Stewart basically uh, came in, gave an extra shove to Cronwall, and uh, was reprimanded for it. He was given a five-minute major in a game misconduct for checking from behind. Uh, as I mentioned, the three-game suspension, along with forfeiting $46,621.00 62 cents in player salary. That money will be given to the NHL Players Emergency Assistance Fund. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring in Kurt Price on this. And uh, Kurt, uh, what are your thoughts on the suspension to Chris Stewart? Um, yeah, I think um, I think the suspension was uh, about right. Uh, three games is what I thought they would probably give him. Um, when I first saw the play, uh, I I really thought that uh, uh, Cornwall was was messed up pretty bad. I thought that could, he could have he could have been killed. Um, after looking at the replays quite a bit and uh, breaking it down and realizing that Cornwall did kind of cut into uh, Stewart Stewart kind of keen at an angle. Um, Cornwall cut in front of him at the last second. Uh, Stewart expecting a reverse check, um, kind of uh, uh, gave him a pretty nasty shove. Uh, expecting uh, more of a more resistance, I guess, from Cronwall. Uh, Stewart more or less said this. Um, so, and I have no reason to believe they is lying. Uh, so, uh, it was more of a uh, unfortunate uh, outcome of the whole play. You know, Stewart didn't mean to uh, almost break his neck. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, that uh, it was uh, Cronwall being, ended up being okay, so that was good. Um, it was good to see that. And uh, three-game suspension for Stewart uh, is probably a, you know, not what I expected. Yeah, I, I'll admit I I wanted a little more just because uh, that's the kind of hit that excuse me that's the kind of hit that I want to see taken out of the game. But uh, a couple people brought it to my attention. You see hits just like that, uh, and you know two out of three games sometimes. But you just don't you you know the players kind of expect it maybe a little more than Cronwell did, so they can brace themselves a little better. But uh, you know I, I think uh, the suspension itself is fine. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Shanahan's explanation was fine, but uh, I don't know. I kind of think maybe four or five games, just because I, I'm a component of, you know, let's get that kind of head out of the game. Uh, you know, let's uh, let's make sure this doesn't happen again. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna take a slightly I agree with you, but I'm gonna take a slightly different approach uh, 
from where you're coming from as far as where you say taking that type of hit out of the game. Um, only because, I, I slightly disagree, only because um, that kind of hit, um, there was no intent to injure there. Um, and I don't think it was quite as reckless as, as a lot of people may think just because Cromwell did cut into Stewart. Um, Stewart was expecting a, a check from Cromwell and never really got one. I think it was just a kind of a goofy, unfortunate play. Um, I know you. That I know what you're saying. You want to take out the play where you're a certain distance from the boards and you just you you extend your arms out and you shove the guy uh, headlong in the boards. Obviously, that's not something you want in the game. However, um, I think this specific play and every play has to be analyzed, you know, on its own. No no two plays are exactly the same. Uh, but I think with this particular play. Um, it was more of just an unfortunate, uh, goofy occurrence. Uh, uh, like I said, Stewart didn't mean to uh, 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 drive the first on the board. It was just just one of those goofy plays. And I think a three-game suspension um, was probably about right. And if, if he had gotten four or five, you know, I wouldn't have complained about it um, because it was a nasty play. But uh, I think uh, there was no intent there. I think if the intent was there or if it was kind of vicious, uh, I think four or five games could have easily been justified, but uh, in this particular case, I think if you factor in intent, um, I think uh, three games is, is pretty good. Yeah, and Shanahan did mention in Stewart's defense that he's not a dirty player. This is a first-time right. offense, so I'm sure that was taken into consideration uh, when he was when Shanahan was making his, uh, you know, his his, his his ruling on what happened. Right. So. Shanahan, I- I love how they're doing the uh, uh, the video explanations of each play and breaking it down. That is awesome. Oh, it's great. Yeah, I think it's really good for the game. I mean, how many times with Colin Campbell do we find ourselves saying, uh, what? Well, what? What's that yeah. six-game suspension? What's that? Why is that one six? Why is that one two games? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's That's great to see. Yeah. So, uh, any other notes you want to make about that uh, that big win the Blues had over the Red Wings on Tuesday? Uh, aside from the fact that it was a great game, um, I know you'll, if you talk to a lot of Red Wings fans, they'll say that uh, you know, uh, not a not a huge deal. Not a, not a, we, the the uh, Let's Go Wings uh, com podcast guys you talked to uh, pretty much didn't really think the game was a big deal. I know the Blues Wings rivalry is a lot bigger for Blues fans than it is right now for Wings fans, and hopefully, uh, you know, Wings fans take a little more notice of the Blues if they. Uh, keep beating them like this, but uh, uh, great win. Um, I thought uh, uh, Elliot was uh, great. Um, couldn't really uh, complain about too much of anything except for the roughing. Um, I kind of found it off a little bit on the roughing uh, on LuscoBlues.com. It was uh, and over on Lusco Wing, that was in front over there. But it was, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> that third period, that third period was uh, pretty. One of the worst ref periods I've seen in a while. Um, all the non-calls against Detroit, and it seemed like everything the Blues were doing, they were getting called on. And the only call that went in the Blues' favor uh, was that one where uh, Jackman, was it Jackman, I think? Stepped on the, uh, no, it was Steen. Stepped on the puck in the corner, and uh, uh, Blues turned out a penalty for a tripping, which was a horrible call. Yeah, I think it, it was. Bad reffing all around. They had bad reffing all around in the third period, uh, but the Blues seemed to get, the, uh, get hosed. They got hosed a few times. Uh, uh, and you know, it wasn't just bad calls, uh, you know, oh, well, hey, uh, the Blues should have got a power play there. It was, hey, uh, the Blues should have got a power play there, and then two minutes later, the Blues get a call on a penalty that was, you know, yeah, yeah technically it's a penalty, but it was like, if you're, if you're going to call that one, you have to call them before. You know, there was an interference call on the net with Oshie. There was a, uh, there was a, a trip in the corner on Cronwall that uh, was not called. Everyone stopped skating. Everyone thought it was a penalty. Uh, just a horribly rough third period of the Blues. You know, the Blues had overcome the roughing third period, which they did a great job of that, and uh, also uh, sustaining uh, or also uh, holding off everybody, which was uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, did, obviously, the the Blues did end up winning that game. They ended up winning Thursday against the Panthers four to one, and then lost in a shootout to the Minnesota Wild uh, three to two on Saturday. Any comments about those other two games that uh, the Blues played this week? I thought the, uh, the Minnesota game was a little frustrating to watch. They had so many opportunities, and uh, they couldn't get it done. Um, and, and, and it's it's hard to say that uh, you know Minnesota's a, a 
playing very well right now. But, uh, gosh, you had the lead with a couple minutes to in the game. You you really need to win that game. Uh, with a minute and something to go, they you know, uh, get a 15 time goal. You really, you really got to, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, it's one game, and it's, they got the point on the road, so you can't complain too much. But, man, you're you're up by a goal with a uh, uh, really late in third period. You, gotta, you need to hold on to that game, even though it's a road game. Um, and even though they had other opportunities to win, they didn't play the best game, uh, you know, under Hitchcock. But I thought, uh, I guess, you know, it's a point. But I wish they had to. Yeah, and, and you got to figure, too, that the Wild are probably going to be a team that the Blues are going to be battling for a playoff spot uh, late in the season. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. You definitely want to get those two points on them. But uh, if Minnesota falters, falls out of the playoff race, that one point could help us out a lot. Uh, your th- yeah, I thought... Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, real quick, I thought the, uh, the, the Arnott penalty uh, that led to the game-time goal, terrible penalty. I, mean, I'm a, I'm a, I love what Arnott is running uh, the team, but uh, that was just a lazy, you know, slash where the guy goes by instead of moving your feet uh, kind of play. Uh, not, and then, you know, that cost them the game, essentially. Yeah, you're right. And jumping back to the Florida game, um, I wanted to ask you about the T.J. Oshie non-goal, uh, the one where he slid in front. Your thoughts on that play, because I definitely have something cooked up, I'd like to say. Uh, it was a goal. I mean, uh, it, he, made, he made contact with the goalie, but it was ever so slight. It was nothing that Holmstrom for Detroit doesn't do every single shift. So, um, I, I, I don't, it, it's just a bad call. You know, it was a... Um, referee thought he made more contact than he did uh, because uh, he went down to make a save uh, about the time Oshie was, you know, had brushed him. So it, it may have looked like Oshie kind of knocked him back a little more than he did. But, uh, you know, my thoughts on it, uh, terrible call. Uh, and it's unfortunate, too, because that, that, was a, that was a really nice goal. And that was, that was a goal that would have been gotten, uh, you know, down as one of the best, one of the nicer goals of the year. Yeah, that's something I would have loved to see on Blues highlight reels, uh, you know, throughout the season. And, and unfortunately, they're not going to show it because it's just going to remind fans about the horrible, horrible uh, call by the officials. Uh, obviously, my view on it is uh, you're right. You're, everything you said is completely right. That was a goal. Uh, you know, I like uh, Darren Pang's uh, analysis of it when he said his butt, maybe the edge of his butt hits him, you know, and like you said, how many times do we see Tomas Holmstrom do that? How many times do we see Todd Bertuzzi do that? Uh, we see it all the time, and that's just that was just a horrible call, and it really makes you wonder what the officials are watching when stuff like that happens. You can, you can even make an argument he didn't touch him at all. It was that close. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, if he touched him, it was barely. Yeah. Well, uh, we're uh, going to move on with the show. Kurt, I wanted to thank you for taking time out of your day, and I already promised our uh, listeners that we will come back at them strong next week for uh, an, for the 11th episode of St. Louis Blues Radio. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Now it's time for the interview portion of this week's show. I want to welcome in Joe Depto of the Fourth Period and a co-host of the Penns Nation Radio Show. Uh, thanks for coming on this week, Joe. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Yep, and uh, obviously the the big story heading into well for the Blues the game on Wednesday, but really all of Pittsburgh right now is Sidney Crosby uh, coming back in his and playing in his first game since January fifth of uh, this year. Uh, he played tonight at home against the New York Islanders in a in what was a rout. For the Penguins, uh, he scored just 524 into the game and added one more goal and two assists. Uh, besides racking up the points, how do you feel that Crosby looked in this game? Well, it, I, I thought that he looked fantastic in all facets of the game. Um, I, you know, I think that probably the standard was set pretty low to begin with. I think most people were hoping just to have Crosby out there skating and playing as hard as he usually does. Uh, I don't think they expected Sidney Crosby to come out and for a portion of the game single-handedly dominated. Um, he was great on the face-off draw, winning over 70% of his face-offs. Um, he looked fantastic on the power play, which has typically been an albatross for the Pittsburgh Penguins over the last year or so. And he was certainly fitting in nicely with his old line mates, Chris Kunitz and Pascal Dupuis. Um, really, to be honest with you, Jeff, I did not notice a beat from the last time that I saw Sidney Crosby healthy. 
if, if anything, he may have been a little bit faster, a little bit quicker on the draw than he usually is, which is saying something for a guy of, of Crosby's caliber. Yeah, well, uh, I guess Blues fans can hope we see the same opening for David Perron when he returns. But, uh, you know, to, to play the to play the devil's advocate here, um, I'm reminded of, of Steven Strasburg's first game in the Major League Baseball when he struck out 14 Pirate batters. Uh, I bring this up because I wonder how much of Crosby's quick start was his own doing and how much of it was Crosby uh, simply taking advantage of an Islanders team that has won only one game of its last five. Yeah, that's, that's certainly a fair point. I... I think that Sidney Crosby, being a guy that has a championship resume and, and has accomplished so much across the league and has already established himself, I think that that probably would differentiate him from a guy like Steven Strasburg or somebody like that who's just kind of coming right into the league. I know it's the New York Islanders, and I, I certainly do understand that point, but you know, these guys get paid to be professionals too. And it, it, regardless of what you do in the NHL, you know, to come back from that long of a stretch in the NHL and to come back and, and, and play at a high level, um, I think it's impressive regardless of who you do it against. Now, that being said, when they when St. Louis comes into town on Wednesday night, they're obviously going to be facing a, t- a much tougher task in defense and a much more superior goalie. So um, time will tell if this streak will continue. Yeah, and... Uh... As a Blues fan and as a Blues reporter, let's let's hope uh, it doesn't continue. <laughs> but uh, the the Penguins have gone 12, 6, and 3 so far this season. Good enough for first in the division and even first in the Eastern Conference. Uh, with that win tonight, they uh, leapfrogged over Philadelphia. Uh, how have the Penguins been able to keep pace in such a strong division uh, without their All Star, and you know, and in this division too, there's only one team that's uh, under 500, which obviously is the Islanders. Uh, you know, how have they been able to keep this pace up? A lot of it can be attested to coaching. Dan Byles, one of the defending Jack Adams Trophy winner, has really established a lot of strong chemistry with this team. A lot of it is Mark Andre Fleury, who continues to establish himself as an elite goaltender night in and night out. Um, but really, a lot of it, I would say the biggest reason is organizational depth. Even you know, even without mentioning Crosby, this team has played the majority of the season without Brooks Orpik. Their best defenseman, Crystal Tang, was suspended for multiple games. Um, ben Lovejoy was out with a broken wrist. I think Mahalik was out with a broken finger. Um, Evgeny Malkin, who really only played a handful of games throughout October, he, you know, he really was not at full strength until recently. Um, it's just kind of one of those things where I think Pittsburgh, they, they play the same system at all levels of their organization. Dan Bosland's system has played in the NHL, it's played in, in the HL and wilkes barre Strand. So these guys kind of all come up in the system under the same philosophy, and they really buy into the coaching staff. There's mutual respect between the coaches and players, and it's really come to fruition and, and quite a bit of success so far. Yeah, it seems like it. Uh, not only Bilesma as, as being a, a big part of this team, and I guess somebody that's buying into it is uh, James Neal. Uh, he's been a real force for the Penguins so far this year. He scored 12 goals and 21 points so far this season. Uh, tell us about what he's meant for the Penguins uh, to start this season to get them in first place. Well, James Neal was kind of a was kind of a question mark for a lot of Pittsburgh Penguins when he was acquired for Alex Golgowski last February because. A lot of people really enjoyed Alex Golagoski, the puck moving, you know, defenseman and his style that he brought to the game. And when Neil was first acquired, a lot of people had big expectations. But throughout the regular season, he, he really only scored twice. And I think a lot of people were very disappointed by that. But when James Neal came out and, you know, he played a lot, he started playing alongside with Evgeny Malkin. And he just, in the first game against Vancouver, he throws his puck on towards Roberto Luongo in an angle that... Most, most NHL forwards, regardless of how skilled they are, it's, it's just not going to go in. But he manages to score there, and it seemed to really just boost his confidence and take him mentally to a different level that I think really kind of built in with his physical skills. I think Neil's had a problem over the years in terms of his fat, getting off the fast start and slowing down with kind of a confidence issue. And I think that playing in a system like Pittsburgh, where it's really tailor-made for his skill set, He's just thrived, and I, I really don't expect him to slow down anytime soon, especially with Crosby and Malkin coming into full health. 
has he been mostly on on Malkin's line uh, when Malkin's playing? Yes, he's been he's been pretty much while Malkin has been healthy, he's been skating with Evgeny Malkin and uh, the recently acquired Steve Sullivan. Yeah, that well, Blues fans remember Sullivan. That uh, that's one guy I respect probably more than anyone in the league. That guy. Uh, worked his tail off to get back in this league, and uh, you know, love him or hate him, as as a player who killed the Blues, uh, you got to respect a guy that uh, works as hard as he does. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you, Jeff. I think Steve Sullivan is the kind of guy that really is is ideal for a, a general manager like Pittsburgh's Ray Shiro to bring in because he's not going to command a high cap hit. You know, Pittsburgh. Uh, cap hit situation because they do have a lot of star power, the Flurries, Latangs, Cosby, Malcolm Stahl, etc. You know, they're always kind of looking for the bargain bin budget type guys. Um, much like Pascal Dupuis, who's skated with Sidney Crosby tonight. Um, Steve Sullivan's that kind of guy. He, he really, when he's healthy, he does so many great things. He's such a great leader off the ice. He runs the point on the power play, which has been an issue for Pittsburgh, like I was talking about before. And he's got 30 30 hands, so if the guy can stay healthy, really the sky's the limit. And, and I could not agree with you more. I have absolute respect for Steve Saul at the highest level as both a player and a person. Yeah, and uh, the, we do want to mention coming into Wednesday night, the Blues and Penguins have not met since October 23rd of last year, their only meeting of last season. Uh, the Blues won that game one nothing with a game-winning goal coming by the one and only Eric Johnson in overtime. Uh, do you see the same defensive battle, or do you expect a shooting nightmare for the goaltenders? Well, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, Jeff. I would be really surprised if we saw a high-scoring game, like I was telling you a little bit off the air before we got started, I really think that St. Louis Blues defense is one of those underrated in the league. Guys like Barry Jackman, Roman Pollock, these guys don't get the credit they deserve across the National Hockey League, and they're, they're very talented players, and they're, they're in the position they're in for a reason. They're pl- putting up fantastic defensive numbers as a team. Uh, I think that they're adapting very well to Ken Hitchcock's style, and the biggest concern if you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan, anytime you play St. Louis, is the guy you got between the pipes, Jaroslav Halak, that's had Pittsburgh's number for quite some time, dating all the way back to the 2010 playoffs when he was running the show for Montreal Canadiens and shut a very good Pittsburgh Penguins team down in seven games, beating them in their very last game they ever played in Mellon Arena. So, um, and, and he was certainly fantastic when the two teams met last fall. So, I think, despite the star power that Pittsburgh Penguins have up front, um, I would be really surprised if it was the type of score that Pittsburgh beat New York by the night. Yeah, I'll admit, I uh, not to toot my own horn, but uh, I was definitely talking about, I've been pointing at the calendar at this Blues-Penguins game, and I've said, you know, obviously Halak's played a lot better lately, but I did say, he will turn it on by this game with the Penguins because, for whatever reason, he thrives against star players. We saw him do it against Ovechkin. We saw him do it against Crosby, Malkin, all the guys in Pittsburgh. So uh, I think this is going to be a a real test for Halak to see if he is uh, definitely going to stay on this upswing that he's been on the last couple games. Anytime you have a great goalie, it, it just takes him to a higher level when you have a team that plays really solid two-way hockey the way St. Louis does. Even uh, I mentioned Roman Pollock and, and Barry Jack, and even a guy like Kevin Shattenkirk, who I think is going to be really just a terrific two-way defenseman in the league. I don't think that guy has even scratched the surface of his potential. And then up front, guys, you know, I don't have to tell you more than anybody, the guys up front, they play a nice grinding style of hockey with some tough forecheck, which is, ironically enough, what Pittsburgh kind of makes their bread and butter on. So I think you got two teams that are certainly willing to play physical style. They're certainly willing to rely on their, their very strong play in that. And they're not afraid to get to the corners and get to the dirty areas. So I think we could be looking at another physical, tight, competitive game, just like we did last October. Right. And, uh, you know, you mentioned Halak and the Blues defense. Is there anyone on the offensive side of the puck that uh, you think that Dan Bilesma is going to want to have his top guys up against? Well, he's, he's, he's going to be obviously very familiar. 
familiar with guys like Jason Arnett and Jamie Langenbrenner, but the guy that, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how people in St. Louis feel about him, but I've always felt that he was very underrated, and, and he's the type of forward that I think any team would be happy to have, be Alexander Steen. I think he's such an underrated part of that team, and, and just an underrated player in general, that he does so many different things well, that I think that when you put when you have matchups against that guy, you kind of have to take a look at that and say, you know, which which type of Alex Steen are we going to get? Are we going to get the guy that you know goes into the corners and plays plays hard? Are we going to get a guy that wants to, you know use his playmaking skill to set up solid scoring chances? Because I think he's a great player that's certainly capable of both. And Pittsburgh is going to have to keep in mind all of his different abilities when they go to uh, defend him. Right. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, I definitely agree with you. Steen really doesn't get the credit he deserves here. But, uh, you know, I think uh, I think he's starting to show his true colors uh, by, you know, he's he's tied for the league, or I'm sorry, team lead in goals right now with David Backus. And I think people are starting to notice him as he's been playing more on the top two lines than he has the last couple seasons. So uh, definitely one that you guys are going to want, want to watch out for. Uh, I want to thank you a lot for the interview, Joe. It was definitely a lot of fun. And uh, go ahead and tell our listeners how they can interact with you and where they can find all of your work. Well, um, I'm kind of a little bit all over the place. But right now, you can go to the fourth period.com. Um, you can subscribe to the magazine. I'm, I'm writing for both. Um, I also write for a great blog called thehockeyguys.net and thepensionation.com. And you can always follow me on Twitter by going to at pensdeptotfp. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Joe. And let's hope we have a spirited effort for both teams Wednesday night. That's, that's definitely uh, what, what we're all hoping for. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. Really do appreciate it. You got it. Uh, moving on, uh, I do want to tell you about the uh, big news regarding David Perron, uh, the man who's been out since last November uh, after suffering a head injury from uh, Shark Center Joe Thornton on November 4th of 2010. Uh, David Perron basically is cleared for no contact, or I'm sorry, cleared for contact, uh, and uh, this is pretty big news for the team. He's uh, been skating with the team in a red no contact jersey since late October, and team doctor feel that he's ready to go and he's going to be wearing a regular gold jersey with the team practice. Uh, Perron said, quote, I feel good. I feel like it was time to take that step. It's just another step forward and there's still more steps to go. But it felt good to be just another player instead of being the guy you can't do anything with. I'm a long way from where I was when I started skating. There's still a ways to go, but I feel pretty good. I'm going to get some bumps and see how I react to that and keep moving uh, we will have more analysis likely on this next week but uh, just wanted to make you aware in case you were not following the team as closely as uh, some other listeners do uh, there's also some minor injury news to report uh, Looks like Blues defenseman Carlo Koliakovo suffered a mild hand I'm sorry, a mild hamstring strain in the first period of Thursday's four one win over the Florida Panthers. Uh Koliakovo has posted one goal and five assists in thirteen games. He's listed as day to day. The Blues have not called anyone up in his place as he is still active on the roster. Uh, also suffering injuries recently rejuvenated forward T J Oshi. The twenty four year old forward was involved in an incident in the first period of Saturday's 3-2 shootout loss to the Wild, where he jammed his wrist in the half boards at center ice after mixing it up with a Minnesota player. Oshie returned to the game to score his sixth goal of the season, as well as converting the Blues' only shootout goal. Uh, in his place, the Blues have called up Brett Sterling of the Peoria Rivermen. You have not heard of him? You should, because he is playing really good hockey down in Peoria. He's amassed 12 goals this season, which is tied for the American Hockey League lead. His 22 points also ranks him second in the league. Sterling has played in 26 NHL games and registered five goals, four assists uh, for nine points with the Atlanta Thrashers and Pittsburgh Penguins. So uh, that's pretty big news considering, uh, you know, he's... Got some points in just a couple NHL games. So uh, if, if he does play, uh, which they're saying that Oshie might be ready for Tuesday's game, but if he does play, might be uh, might be good to see him on a top line, see what he can bring for this team. We also want to mention that uh, I'll go ahead and tell you the leaders uh, heading into this week. 
Blues have played uh, in a couple games, obviously, this week, and a couple changes of note. Uh, leading in goals, you now have Alex Steen and David Backus with seven each. Leading in assists is Kevin Shattenkirk with ten. Leading in points is TJ Oshie and Alex Steen with 13. And we have a new plus-minus leader in Alex Steen with a plus 11. Uh, Brian Elliott still leads in all goaltender statistics with a 1.43 GAA, .947 save percentage, and two shutouts with a 7-1-0 record. I also want to mention that uh, last week we told you that we would have a Riverwatch segment for this week's show, but obviously with uh, the problems we faced, uh, we were not able to bring that to you this week. Uh, we are working on getting Zach of the Peoria Rivermen blog to do the segment as well, uh, so we will have that for you next week, and that will be handled by Jeff Quirin. Uh, make sure to check out Zach's work at rivermenblog.wordpress.com, or you can follow him on Twitter at Let's go ribs. It's L E T S G O R I V S. Uh, your three stars of the week go number three to TJ Oshie, uh, one goal and one assist. Alex Steen gets the second star for two goals and two assists. David Backus gets the number one star of the week with three goals and one assist. Also mentioning uh, he has a plus. Three. Uh, coming up this week, the Blues will have four games before the next recording of this show. Tuesday, the Blues will play the L.A. Kings at 6.30 p.m. Uh, it's a versus game, so make sure you tune in to versus and not Fox Sports Midwest if you're not going to the game. Also, if you're not going to the game, make sure you join us for the on the line with the Z-Man viewing party. Uh, I originally told you it was at Pat's Bar and Grill, but it is now at the Sports, I'm sorry, the Sports Attic uh, at 8212 Manchester Road, Brentwood, Missouri, 63144. Uh, this is going to be a night where I will be there. I know Kurt will be in attendance, so uh, I'll be sure to come out for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you're not going to come out for the game, make sure you come out as the we will be giving away a brand new Blues jersey between the second and third periods. Uh, and then, obviously, we talked about this with Joe Depto. Wednesday, we will be... Recording at, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday we will have a game between the Pittsburgh Penguins at 6 o'clock p.m. in Pittsburgh. Friday, the Blues will travel back home and play the Calgary Flames at 7 o'clock. Sunday, the Blues will close out the week and play 5 o'clock in Columbus. Uh, sadly, that is all we have for you on this week's show. Uh, make sure to tune in next time as we will update you on the next four Blues games that we've played this week, as well as any other team news. Make sure to check back to stlbluesradio.com or check us out on iTunes. Uh, I'm Jeff Ponder. Reach me by email at jponder94, Twitter handle jponder94. Check out letsgoblues.com and make sure you listen to me on the line with the Z-Man, Thursdays at 1020 on 1380 AM. I'm also on on Tuesdays when the Blues have a game that evening. Uh, and then also I do want to mention, make sure you, if you want to enter interact with Kurt Price. You check him out on uh, Twitter at C Price, and then you can also check him out on his uh, on the Let's Go Blues forums at uh, C Price 12 is his handle on there. Also, uh, Jeff Quirin, you can reach him on Twitter uh, at JTQ underscore one or the official Blue Note Zone Twitter feed, which was uh, I believe it's the Blue Note Zone. Uh, you can also email him at the Blue Note Zone at Gmail dot com. Uh, and uh, yeah, make sure you check out Blue Note Zone. It's a great site as well as Let's Go Blues for any blues information. Uh, if you have any questions for us, please email us at feedback at stlbluesradio.com. You can like our fan page on Facebook, St. Louis Blues Radio. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at STL Blues Radio. For Jeff and Kurt, I want to thank you for tuning in for this short segment that we have for you this week, and you will have a longer and better show from us next week on St. Louis Blues Radio. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and let's go Blues. Blues.